Attention all truckers, if you're looking for a new job, call NCI at 844-311-7076. They offer great equipment, great benefits, a great working atmosphere, and most important, a great steady income week after week after week because they are owned by their own product. Call NCI today at 844-311-7076. <laughs> Welcome to Talk CDL, the podcast that can't make up its mind what podcast it is. <laughs> check one. Check, check. Ruth Ann, here we are. Here Monday we are. In the studio. It's a Monday. Happy Trucker's Day. Is it? Is no, it's not. I'm is, just making it up. Just saying, yeah. Hey, you know, everybody else has a holiday, but Trucker's. Do we we don't have one, do we? I, I I never even thought of it actually. I you know, for shouldn't there not be a holiday for the guys and the women that brings everything you own to your house? Should should we not have one holiday? You know what? I'll look into that. Trucker's Day. I if, like that. Even if I have to make it up, I will definitely start I looking just, at that. Uh, oops, sorry, that was loud. I I just made it up. But you want it for today. For, National, for June seventeenth for the rest of the world. Well, being this is pre recorded Every trucker would get it and go, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so no. But no, let's put in, maybe we should run a poll. We're, we're trying to come up with a national happy trucker day. And maybe we should take the word happy out. Just a, a national trucker's rest day. Right, Ruthann? Mm-hmm. I'm looking, I'm actually Googling to see if there's such a day. <laughs> uh, uh, a trucker's national holiday. So what I'm saying is if we, if we come up with a national trucker's holiday, I'm hearing static in the mic. It's because you have the, the thing turned up too high usually. No, it's not. Well, maybe it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyways, so if we have a national trucker's holiday where every trucker has to be given that day off or even at least celebrated it to where they get at least an extra pay in their check. Oh, okay. So national, the national appreciation week for truck drivers is coming up. Actually it's in um, September 9th through 15th is trucker appreciation week nationally. And then I just found that October 4th is national truckers day. What? Yeah. Get the frog out of here. And it here. says, so give your favorite trucker a hug and buy him a cup of coffee. So October, isn't that weird? October 4th. Well, you know what? It, I probably knew about it. We just never take it serious. Okay. So now we have our holiday. Yep. October 4th. Okay. So truckers have October 4th. That's your birthday month. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so what we have to do is we have to make a big deal of it this year. Well, we, yeah, I think so. Okay. Anyways. So you have some trucking news, but you know what? First, you know, we're making a commercial for our new sponsor, mm-hmm. Magna Stop. Magna Stop. How, how do you spell Magna Stop? Is it just M-A-G-N-A-S-T-O-P? Magna Stop, mm-hmm. right? It's it's broken down for magnet, so Magna, M-A-G-N for magnet, Magna Stop. And And... I wanted to bring this up since it's the first. This is kind of going to be his first official commercial right now as we're talking. Oh, by the wing. We're giving, well, but we're giving them more minutes okay. in talking about this. Okay. The inventor's name is Travis. Travis, what? Do you have his last name? <laughs> or not? No? I do. I just didn't think I'd need it right but, now. I'm but, just calling him Travis. But Travis, we, we got turned on to Magna Stop sometime last year. And it's actually getting really popular. I know that it was at the truck show. I think it was at the truck show. And people were requesting, how do you get this? Well, I have a lot of information on that. But I actually have to throw something else in there. Because he had told me the breaking down of the name of it, the Magna Stop. Okay, go ahead. For Magnet, M-A-G-N. And then A is for Axle. And then Stop. So it's Magnet axle stop so he combined it as magna stop oh wow that's actually inventive i didn't i thought it was just you know kind of like a magna just making the word magna no, he, and, sh- and abbreviating it into stop like creating one word but this is actually three words magnet mm-hmm. axle stop 
And I and I did notice a couple drivers when we had did a video on it before said they had something like that, but what they didn't have was the magnet. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing at, when I was looking at. We still have one sent to us. We're going to be unboxing. Yeah, I haven't been able to. Stop. We had a, a, a big, huge. Maybe we should tell them what this is. So we're talking about this trucker's. I, I call it. A, it's like your little personal friend. Okay, it's like a, having a spotter in your truck if you want to slide your tandems. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, and I seen a guy do a video on it the other day, and more importantly, the video shows if, the, if, if you need to just slide one hole, if you just need to shift your tandems one hole, this magnus stop, all it is, it's a, it literally fits in your hand. It's the size of your hand. Yeah, it's not big. Yeah, and all you do is you walk back and you stick it in the slot and the magnet holds it in place. Mm -hmm. And then you back up and it, it stops you right at the hole you need to be at. It's, it's like having the perfect spotter every time. And then when you go to pull it out, it slides right out. Lock your pin and you're good to go. I'm not kidding you. And you can... He, the guy that I watched demonstrated it in the front of the trailer. Or in, I'm sorry, in the front of the tandems, and then he and then he backed up and and put the magnus stop in the back hull behind the tandems for sliding backwards. So either place you can you can uh, adjust your you can tandems. move forward or backwards for your tandems. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest with you, it's such a simple invention. You would think somebody would have invented it 40 years ago, but nobody did. Travis had the great idea. And they're very cheap. And we wanted to mention that we're also a promo here at Talk CDL. Mm -hmm. If you buy one off of uh, Travis. Yep. You go to Magnus Stop Online. They get a discount. Mm -hmm. If you mention Talk CDL, you'll get how much off? $10. Right. And I don't believe that they're a whole lot more. I mean, I'm just saying they're, they're only $40 or $50 mm -hmm. to begin with. But I promise you... Over the next year, as you're dropping and hooking, and you know you got to slide, somebody's got the tandems all the way back, and you know you're going into the city, you need to slide forward, you need to put it at a certain place, or if you've just you know got on a way scale and you know you need to slide two holes, whatever. This little piece is so ingenious. I swear to you, you guys are gonna love it. Ruth Ann, what's Travis's or Magnus stops? Yeah, phone it's number? M A. Well, you don't have a phone number. You only have online. So it's M A G N A stop dot online is their website magna stop but uh in the future we'll we'll have probably a one minute or less commercial but yeah. we, i wanted to talk about it because but go to their go to their thing and put talk cdl in the promo code and you'll get your 10 bucks off right I, I just wanted to mention magna stop today because first off he's a trucker second off he's such a nice guy and his intention was to help the industry yeah and he spends money to build these things yeah himself mm -hmm. so these things are an amazing tool that will, it, they look like they'll last a lifetime. And uh, go check out Magnus Stop. Check out the video before you buy it on YouTube and watch for Talk CDL's video that's yeah. going to be being made also. And you can make your decision there. But I guarantee if I was back out on the road, I would have a Magnus Stop if I was pulling a van or a reefer. And oh, I, yeah, I definitely. Because yeah. it's not huge. It's it's not extremely heavy either. Yeah. Um, so I was going to show... If I did it, you know, like to show it because I'm very like tiny, simple to show it, it's not hard for women even. But it also, if you go to their Facebook page, the Magna Stop Facebook page, they are going to be having giveaways and drawings also. Um, Travis said to if you go to Magna Stop online, if you go to their regular website, it, he, he put on the little quotation says, look for the dog in the window, I guess, just to make sure that the people are at the right site. But they have a couple of places. He's now going on to Amazon shortly. But he has um, a couple of states that he actually is selling it in um, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, North Carolina, Nebraska, and South Dakota. So there's a couple of retailers now that are selling it. All right, drivers, if you're interested, check out Magnus Stop. Let us know here at Talk CDL how good that is. Send us a testimonial help Travis out. He's a, he's a brother trucker mm -hmm. trying to do good in the industry and he's not trying to get rich. It's really not a, a high price thing that he's selling. Ruth Ann, you've got some trucking news for us today. I do. What do you got? What do you got in trucking? One of the things that people were questioning is if your ELD ends up like going down, 
you know, what are other ways to make sure that you have your, your logs done? Good question. I never thought of that. What happens when your ELD is DOA? Yeah, malfunctioning or doing something so that you can end up having... You didn't give me a compliment on that nifty little thing. I DOA. Just said, DOA. Yeah, your ELD is DOA. DOA. Yeah. Okay, so what happens when the dang thing dies? Well, if something ends up going on, they said still do your paper logs. Oh, so... You could still do paper logs as a backup in case your ELD malfunctions, but there's also apps that you can use that helps a lot with that too, that they will accept. Well, here, well, let me just play advocate here. Oh boy. No, I'm just serious. No, 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 just. No, first off, do companies encourage you to carry a paper log as backup? Because if you're a company the size of Warner and you're not wanting to buy paper logs anymore, that's a lot of logs you got to, I can't, you know what I was thinking about the other day, and I'll go into that in a second, but if if you don't have a backup log, and let's say you don't have a cell phone that has the network, or you're in a dead area, you can't download a quick app, what do you do? What can you do if your logs go down? That's a very good, you know what I would do? I would, I would drive, or I would call dispatch. I'd call dispatch and tell them to shoot me something on the Qualcomm authorizing me to move forward. That's a good piece of advice for drivers. If your ELD is down, you don't have a backup log, and you can't, do not have the capability of getting an app on your phone, call your dispatcher and just politely protect your ass mm-hmm. and ask him, please send me a Qualcomm authorizing me to move forward Because most likely what they're going to do is they're going to go, no, we cannot do that. Safety would have to do that first off. They're probably not going to do that. They're probably going to tell you to sit tight till they get it fixed. And that's probably the best advice you can give these guys. Well, right now it says, this is from the FMCSA. It says what to do if your ELD malfunctions. And it says, first, note the malfunction of the ELD and provide written notice of the malfunction to the motor carrier within 24 hours. So if for some reason your ELD is malfunctioning, like you just said, let dispatch know. But they're saying, write it down. Don't just give them a phone call. So make sure there's documents of it being that you're letting them know. And then it says, reconstruct the record of the duty service, the RODs. Um, for the current 24-hour period and the previous seven consecutive days, and rec- um, the record of and record records of duty status. So basically, they're saying cover your butt for like the past week, just in case if something happens with the ELD where it just wipes out for whatever reason. Are they saying? I'm sorry. Are they saying that? This is the advice from the FMCSA. Mm-hmm. So this is actual FMCSA advice, mm-hmm. which I get. But let's say you get some. Pencil neck geek DOT officer that, you know, is stickler by the book. So you're saying, it sounds to me like they're saying, not you. It sounds to me like they're saying, maybe keep a tablet with you and you can actually write down, here's my hours, here's when I left, here's my on-duty status. I'm just letting everybody know this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I would say that would be my last resort. I think my first resort, I'm going to go back to it and say, I'm calling my safety director and having him put something in writing that I'm allowed to move forward only because I think there's too much BS that can go wrong when you start driving down the road and you get pulled into a DOT station and you have, well, eight hours ago, my e-log went out on me and blah, blah, blah. Now, all of a sudden, you open up a can of worms. I'm just saying. No, you can actually get probably in, in some serious trouble if you didn't, you know, if you go in there and say, hey, you know, my, you know, eight hours ago, my ELD screwed up. And then the first thing that DOT is going to say is, have you notified your company? Have you done, what have you done to protect yourself? Because like I'm saying, it says here, you know, notify your company. Then it says for the past, you know, for the current seven, 24 hours, make sure you write that down right away. And then while you're doing that, go ahead and get the previous seven days to show your, 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 you know, to make sure that you're, you're within your compliance for the week. And then it says here, it says, um, record the records of duty status on a graph grid paper log or ELD software, which is the apps that there that you can end up getting that they comply with what the what the current regulations are unless you already have records of your previous 7 days on the ELD cuz i guess sometimes you can pull your your 
your documents from ELD itself, and you can keep them at, you know, like maybe you store them. And then it says continue to manually prepare your rods in accordance with the 49 CFR until the ELD is in service and back into compliance. The recording of the driver's hour of service on a paper log or ELD so- or electric logging software cannot continue for more than eight days after the malfunction. A driver that continues to record his or her hours of service on a paper log or electronic so- logging software beyond eight days is a risk of being placed out of service because then they're going to think that you're taking double logs. Yeah, I, I see that. And you know what? I, and I do see their point. Um, so, I mean, you can pick up a, a regular paper log book at any truck stop still. Mm-hmm. I, I think I was at the TA the other day and I seen a, a pack of them. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, you know, maybe for backup, that's a good idea, drivers. Pick up a log and store it in your briefcase or whatever you, wherever you keep your paperwork just in case. Because I guarantee you, most of you probably won't ever f- uh, have a malfunction in your ELDs. But I guarantee you, some of you will. So I, that's probably, I'll tell you what, that's a good question to ask in orientation. And here's the other thing. As these ELDs keep going into the future, you have more and more drivers coming into the industry that have never touched the paper log. Will they even understand how to fill it out? You know what I mean? So I would say be prepared for that stuff because it could cause, and I'll tell you the reason I say it. I couldn't tell you how many videos I've seen where somebody actually had to recite a law to a cop or a DOT officer that that was new or didn't understand what they're doing and for some reason you get you get it you get some place where like these small town cops are also DOT officers and he doesn't understand that oh it's a broke down ELD this guy's allowed to record you it, you just said that he's allowed to record up to 8 days mm-hmm. so legally he's in his right yep but I'm just saying I would be really cautious on how I do that, and I wouldn't even think of moving a mile without my company knowing because how many times in the past have, have you know, especially small companies, threw a driver under the bus because, you know, they asked the driver to do something, and they're not going to say, they're not going to stand in court and go, oh, yeah, we told the driver to do this. When he shouldn't have been able to. But it sounds like you're able to. So at least we know you're able to. Yeah, it says here, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration recently updated the ELD-related facts part of it, which is the frequently asked questions on their answer and their answer at its website. So that's on the FMCSA website. On their, their facts section, it says that with unofficial official information for anyone in doubt as a policy for appropriate backups to the event of an ELD O A O B R D malfunction has has been noted before such facts are not exactly capital G guidance but policy lowercase g guidance whatever you want to call it has been set via the facts so in other words they are allowing these to happen because it's a piece of equipment equipment can fail so if it happens, they don't want the driver to end up getting any type of fines or any kind of problems that way. So they're allowing the driver to do a backup on their paper logs to help when the ELD is down so that there's no fining or any other problems that they're going to have. And I see the with that rule of eight days, if after eight days, if you didn't get it fixed, you're in danger of being put out of service, you mm-hmm. read. Mm-hmm. And see, back when younger Troy was driving, I probably would have maybe cut a cord or... You would have been out of service. <laughs> I would have figured out a way to go back on paper logs. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, okay, I got it fixed on day nine. And then, you know, day 10, oh, it broke again. Now, I don't know that you can... You know, can you keep doing that? Yeah, I doubt it. I'm on, I'm on paper logs every other eight days. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still on paper logs, kind of. All right, so anyways. No, but that's good. That's actually really good to know. And I never thought of that question, what happens if you have a malfunction in, you know, like, for example, keep trucking, right? That's an app people use, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if that goes down, you know? Um, Or or, or what happens if your phone goes down? (laughs) You know what I mean? If 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 you're using keep trucking and... Your phone gets shut off or you lose your phone, it gets broken, whatever the case is, there's the answer right there. What happens if your Qualcomm, something happens, whatever the case is, 
if you're having a problem with a, a, a your ELDs, you are technically allowed to move forward and keep paper record of it mm-hmm. up to eight days. But you sure better cover your own ass by... I, me personally, again, I like the idea of before I move this truck trucking company, you know, can you just put it in writing? It's okay for me to move forward. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just saying, cover your ass. Yeah, well, you have to. You don't want to end up getting a fine. That's why you do pre-trips, too, because you're not going to sit there and if you end up getting an inspection and you have something out, you don't want to be blamed for the company not taking care of their equipment. You're, that's why you do the pre-trip. Yeah. You know what's well, one of the reasons. And, and Rethan, also in orientation, or if you've been at the trucking company long enough, long enough, go ahead and ask them what what do we do just in case of this in your next safety meeting. Bring that one up. Got, you know, we heard Talk CDL talking about this, um, and and we'd like to know what is our procedure here if for some reason we have ELD malfunctions. And you know what, some of these guys might already know and, and have probably already gone through it. So right. All right. Good deal. Good, good, good topic, Ruthann, as you're getting a text message. No, phone call. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just drop the phone. I did. I just said can't talk right now. Okay. Well, that's good. They're going to try to reach you now, though. Oh, it must be a certain person or two that we know. Yes. Yeah. So the next thing I have is there when we did, you know, how we did the, the blitz this just recently for First the inspection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So far, they're not. We don't have all the updates yet, but I can tell you over three hundred trucks were trucks, not trucks. <laughs> three hundred trucks, drivers placed out of service during road check in Rhode Island and New Hampshire. So just in those, because you know Rhode Island's just a, a mm-hmm. Rhode, Rhode Island to me reminds me of a small town. The whole state, it's very tiny. And if you if most truckers go up ninety five, they they kind of blink their eye and they go in and go out of Rhode Island when they go into Mass. So between Rhode Island and Mass or Connecticut, you said New Hampshire. Oh, neither. <laughs> oh, well, oh, the only reason I'm wondering because I thought maybe there were two states that touch, but no, no Rhode Island no. doesn't touch New Hampshire. Yeah. So you're saying between New Hampshire and Rhode Island, they they Just put three hundred trucks out of service, and they're very small yeah. trucking states. They conducted over nine hundred inspections, resulting in nineteen hundred violations, and more than three hundred of them were out of service violations. Wow, those New Englanders! Yeah. All right, they're bad drivers up there, huh? <laughs> Evidently. No, I'm kidding. No, but but so three hundred out of out of service with two states. I'd like to know what all forty eight states. Um, and the lower 48, I'd like to know what the number was. And, and was this also conducted in Alaska? I'd, I would really like to know what the entire, and Hawaii, if they did it there. And here would be my next question. Puerto Rico, which you and I have been to Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. and the trucking looks way different there, believe me. If you guys, for you guys that have never been to Puerto Rico, is DOT there? That's a good question. They are supposed to be part of the United States now. Mm-hmm. So does Puerto Rico have a, a Department of Transportation monitoring them? And is is the is it as as governed as here? I guarantee you not. Oh, but, no. it's uh, I doubt it's governed as much there. But for all you drivers in Puerto Rico that listen to Talk CDL, Please send us a message. Yeah, let us know what goes on there. We get a lot from all the, the countries. Same with Hawaii and Alaska. Let us know. Yeah, if you guys are in, we get a lot of, we get people from Alaska emailing us. But Hawaii, any of you truckers over there, let us know how the DOT is in Hawaii. We And I want to know for all you guys and gals that are trucking. And believe me, trucking in Puerto Rico, you can, there, I don't know that there's really anything considered over the road because you could be from one end of Puerto Rico to the other in like no time. But and I would, the roads are skinny. That's what I'm getting yeah, at. It was like amazing there. Everywhere. What I'd like to know is how is the DOT there and is there a DOT there and do, do they enforce anything there uh, like they do here? And I would like to know, Ruthann, also. Got how curious minds. I, I do have a curious mind. I, I would like to know if two states, New Hampshire and Rhode Island, got 300 shut down vehicles in that week. That's why I tell everybody, avoid avoid that week. Everybody said to me, oh, yeah, well, if you're a compliant, Troy, you shouldn't have to worry about it. But but you know what? They look for reasons to ticket you no matter what. The, a, a light that would have went out an hour ago, you're getting a ticket because it's their blitz. But I would like to know what the entire country's number of shutdown trucks were. If you got we two just, states, I want to know what everybody's We about. We just haven't gotten all the data in yet. I can yeah. tell you this. Um, New Hampshire started when they did the inspections. They gave decals for the trucks that did pass 
out of all of their trucks that they did, they only were able to give out 61 decals stating that those tracks passed the level one inspection. Oh, that sounds like BS. So you're telling me only 61 got a gold star, right? You got your little gold star out the OT. You Hampshire. gave 61 truckers that, but you shut down 300 and how many? 1,900 violations. That, yeah, See, that that's, just, this is my point. This actually is my point, Ruth Ann. They're so in depth in make taking a comb and going over your truck and every piece of paper you have and everything about you. When you get pulled in on those blitz, there if if they only found sixty one people that they can give a gold star to, and the rest got either a warning, a violation, or shut down. That to me tells me, my gosh, because here's the thing: you just said equipment breaks down. I start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden, I have a, a tire that goes flat, and I didn't even know because I ran something over, or a light that went out, or something starts leaking, a seal. That happens, ironically, on the day of the blitz. When I checked it this morning, I'm getting a ticket. So that's why I say, on those blitz weeks, I don't care how compliant you think you are. You pull in. Remember, New Hampshire only gave 61 freaking gold stars out, and everybody else got a smack in the ass. I'm telling you, Ruth, and that's proof of me being right, of course. Go ahead. Are you done? I am done. That was my uh, rant. That's I'm, BS. I'm, I'm going to read the next paragraph, and you're going to rant again. State uh, Rhode Island State Police say they conducted 416 total inspections and found 696 vehicles. Uh, violations, 136 driver and violations. They, the inspectors took 89 trucks and 28 driver out of service for violations, including underinflated tires, inoperable turn signals, or brake lights, air brakes out of adjustment, and hours of service violations and log bl- logbook violations, and more. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not saying that a a uh, some drivers probably don't. You know, go over their vehicles. I've I've been at truck stops, and I've and I've watched drivers come. You know, sleep there all night, and then get up in the morning and go in, take a probably a leak, and eat, get something to eat. Come out, get in their truck, and just take off without even walk, doing a walk around. Okay, I you know you see that all the time. If if you're not maintaining your vehicle, then yeah, you deserve a ticket. But I I know there's a lot of guys that do maintain their vehicles. And like I said, there's too much that can break down from the minute after you've done your inspection till the time you pull into a DOT scale house. And now you're screwed because a light went out or a seal broke or just something happened within the last four hours. You're going to get penalized for it. You're getting a ticket. And on those blitzes, there's no mercy, man, because you know why? Because we want to be the the DOT station number 19 that beats number 21, you know, in the next county. I'm telling you, it's competition, and truckers get screwed over it. That's, That's my example of the rant. I just read the next paragraph. You. I Exactly. All right, I'm done ranting. Go ahead. What do you oh got? Oh, my gosh. What okay. Um, there's a group that uh, it was on CDL Life. That they they actually I pulled it from there. Multi mega carriers told lawmakers at Congress that they feel as though thousands of truck drivers are manipulating drug testing protocols and should be removed from the nation's highways. Here's where I'm getting actually irritated with this. Not that you know CDL Life put this on because they're great, but because here's what this group decided what they were going to do. They said on June 12th they went to Congress. Um, to the House of Representatives uh, for the D- for the transportation infrastructure, they said that they they're calling for a a hearing. Un- it's called under pressure the state of trucking in America, and it was groups like the ATA, OIDA, um, the Trucking Alliance. They're they they're sitting there saying that that all these truck drivers, thousands of truck drivers, need to be removed from the highway because of illicit drug use, and that they're they're cheating the. Uh, testing the way that they do it between the urinalysis and the hair thing. Well, listen to this. It says a urinalysis and hair urinalysis. They took 151,662 truck driver applicants. And out of those, they did the urinalysis and the hair analysis. Almost all applicants held an active commercial driver's license. This is where their thousands of drivers are using. 94% of the truck driver applicants tested drug-free. 
That means only 6% of those drivers flunked. And they're sitting there saying, oh, all these truck drivers are having um, thousands of them need to be removed from the road because of illicit drug use. No, 6% did it. Not, you know, and I understand drivers, there's there's an abundance of drivers, but don't sit there and smash and put a hole in a big group of it. 6% we're, we're doing it out of the 151,000. Okay, well, let Sorry. me just say, I and I already know I don't want people being confused on what you're saying because you can be a very, very confusing person. That's that's a way of keeping people on their toes. Because you're female, first off. And, nope. and, and that's But anyway, so, so you're not sitting here saying that the guys that are on drugs that you believe should be able to drive a truck. I know that. No. Uh, you, you don't, I want them off the road, too. Yeah, you want them off the road, too. I, I think what they're saying is at 6%, that's still thousands of drivers. And when they say they're manipulating it, you know, here's here's the the quagmire though when it comes to all this drug screening and everything. There's a lot of states right now where marijuana is legal. Okay, so y- you can't punish somebody for doing something that's lawful, legal, permitted, whatever you want to call it. They're allowed to do it. The problem is when it comes to DOT. DOT says. Zero tolerance. Well, I understand that. But if somebody smokes a joint, I'm just going to say this. Somebody smokes a joint, smokes a little weed, all right? I mean, there's a reason doctors prescribe it first off. But if somebody smokes a little weed on on the first of the month and then on the 21st of the month fails a drug screen from something they smoked three weeks ago in their state, in their legal You cannot judge somebody that way. And I'm telling you, this is gearing up for a crazy lawsuit. Now, don't get me wrong. We see it all the time where a truck driver is high or he's on meth or he's on something crazy and he ends up wiping out families on the road, which is horrible. And yes, those guys should be off the road. I agree with the ATA and those guys. But like you're saying, you can't just target a number that you don't know for sure that they're trying to fool the system. And when they say they're trying to manipulate the system, what does that mean? Are you saying that they're on, because I know that, like, for example, manipulate the system. Some people are on painkillers. Well, that's illegal to drive a tractor trailer if you have a narcotic in your system, number one. It's illegal to drive impaired, number two, whether it comes to alcohol, weed, a narcotic, whatever the case is. So when they say manipulate, what do they mean by manipulate the system? Well, what they're saying is, and this is what I'm getting from the article, Uh um, the urinalysis missed 9 out of 10 actual illicit drug users. So I think what they're trying to do is just get rid of the urinalysis, and they're wanting the DOT and the FMCSA to strictly go all hair follicle. That's what it's sounding like to me. They already said that that's probably the next step. Well, that's what they're going to because it says the most common, the most prevalent drug was cocaine followed by opioids. Opioids. (laughs) Opioids. <laughs> Opioids or whatever, yeah. yeah. And then marijuana. So it's saying that the applicants who failed or refused the hair test were disqualified for the employment completely for those companies. So I think what they're trying to do is just really get rid of the availability of... of. What's funny is, well, I read a little bit about that, Ruthann, and right now the only legal drug test for the industry is your analysis. Your, companies are allowed to conduct their own hair follicle test, but like you said, they'll, if they refuse the hair follicle, then they're terminated right off the spot for refusing a hair follicle, but that's not a result that DOT accepts right now. The DOT only accepts a urinalysis. Right. You can look that up. Mm-hmm. So you, you'd almost think that there could be a lawsuit brewing there because you have a trucking company saying, okay, we want to do hair follicles, but yet it's not a standard test in the industry itself. That could be something that could be brewing also. Right. I'm telling you, man, you got to watch these little loopholes in the laws. Well, about the, it. And look, the bottom line, I just want to say something. You and I are big advocates. We don't ever want somebody high or drunk or impaired or, or not being able to be fully in control of that 80,000 pound rig that you're driving around my family and your own family. You know, the best thing, and I've always said this, if, if you have a drug problem or an alcohol problem, the best thing to do Honestly, is get help. Stop driving a truck. Even if you lose everything, believe me, it's better than going to prison. There's guys right now in prison 30, 40 years because they were driving impaired and you and they killed five, six, seven, eight. 
people in one shot. And believe me, 80,000 pounds can wipe out many cars when it wrecks. So my advice to you would be get a grip on it. You're better off homeless for the next month until you get into a program and, and get yourself sober to where you can start driving soberly and have a good life. I rattled that one on, didn't I? Okay. So it's saying that there's 3.5 million commercial truck drivers that are on the road and they can, they can project that with 99% confidence and a margin of error of like mm, little around 1% that 301,000 commercial drivers would fail or refuse a hair analysis because of the drug use that they're doing. So what they're recommending and what they're asking Congress to do is to speed up the hair-based drug testing guidelines that are currently underdeveloped to try and get a little bit more accurate. Mainly, I'm, I'm kind of guessing for those drivers that, you know, the, the off-duty it's marijuana smokers, you know, when you're off duty doing it I in, think a, that, in a legal state. Right. And yeah. that's what I think they're trying to do because so much of it is becoming legal right now that they're trying to make it more guidelines to, okay, this is your home time. Cause you know, when you do the hair testing, you can break it down really easy on time frames on when the, you know, the, the illegal drug or the paraphernalia that you're using is, is more uh-huh. done. Yeah. Now, you know, I think Colorado and Washington were the first states to legalize weed. I think there's 11 states now that it's it's recreational. And I think it's one of the states is is going to have legal heroin soon where you can shoot up and be on heroin. And then I think after that, they're going to be getting crack legalized also. So all that's going to be I'm kidding, Ruth. And there's no legal heroin or crack. That's not going to happen. It's not. I don't think it is, but that was me clowning. I didn't hear you laughing. That's why I, I stopped. No, it's just you I, rattling again. I'm just trying to get the news done and okay, you know, get it done. I'm, I'm, get I, it I, done. I need to do the thing that you do and do that look. Yeah, you need to push and, me along like when I'm pushing you along. Okay, so Werner is expanding their operations for the Mexico and Texas border. Did you know that? What, what do you mean expanding their operations for? Okay, Warner Enterprise continues to invest in U.S. slash Mexican trade, okay. regardless of the ups and downs of the of the trade negotiations. In May, Warner opened up a 17,000 square foot refrigerated cross dock operations facility in Laredo. Okay, so it's an eight million dollar uh, facility that that features 13 dry docks and eight refrigeration docks. So what they're doing is they are creating an alliance between Mexico and U.S. to have more of their, with having the dock right there, they're hoping that it makes it easier for the companies when they want to, when we're trading back and forth our freight, to make it easier for them to bring their products in and out of both countries for transporting it right there in Laredo, across the border. Hey, that sounds good. I mean, honestly, hats off to Warner. I I don't have a problem with any legal trading or, you know, uh, getting products from Mexico, we, you can't, I'll tell you what, some of the best vanilla extract I've ever bought in my life came out of, I forget where in Mexico. Um, I think it was, uh, your mother's friend when they went on that Troidy. cruise, Troidy, mm-hmm. her name is Troidy. She's from Germany. Brought, brought us back some, uh, vanilla beans. What's that? The vanilla beans, is all I was saying. I oh, said vanilla van- beans. Yeah, she brought us back vanilla beans from Mexico, but she also brought us back the vanilla. the vanilla extract right from Mexico itself. And and that, that had to be the best over-the-counter, except for the stuff I make myself, had to be the best vanilla extract that I've ever had in my well, life. Mexico offers a lot of really good products when it comes to, especially, you know, their foods and stuff. So there's nothing wrong with trading yeah. as long as it's all done properly. There, what, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Yep. So hey, hats off to Warner, man. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you're doing things the right way and it's keeping our people employed, hats off. So what else? You got anything else for that or is that it? Well, I do have a couple other things. Um, one of them I'm going to do really go really big into another pod. But what I'm going to do is bring out a shout to Alabama right now because they just passed the law to add human trafficking to the training schools in their pr- curriculums. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I wish you would have waited for the next pod. We could have talked a lot about we that because we're at 40 minutes. But yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next pod. But that is something I believe 
everybody should implement into their program because I know Tennessee and California, both of those states, actually had their local police training truckers how to spot trafficking. It's big. Trafficking's big. So, anyways, you got anything else? I do. One thing I'm just going to give a shout out to quick is the um, the Associ- American Association of Owner Operators. When we did that pod with them, they had said about the meals. Remember, they're d- looking into doing the this, the driver meals. Well, we do have a that is now in fact, and Bob Perry from um, Nutrition Corp is involved with that, and we're going to be setting up a pod with him, so listen for that in the future. Oh, okay, so you're in communication with those guys again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds awesome. Anything else? Are we wrapping? We're wrapping. All right, let's wrap this pod up, everybody. I'm looking forward to National Trucker Day, October 4th. You know, I'm so stupid. Everybody's probably going, Troy, everybody knows that's Trucker Day. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.